Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Battletech, where we have a little bit of company management to take care of. So we earned some XP on that last job. Uh, Reckless is up to 2600. We definitely should make sure we spend our XP uh, before going into battle is a thing I am going to forget to do from time to time, but obviously having more skill points is better. As you can see, any, any skill level that has a little dot in it is going to give you some kind of improvement. So like going from Guts 2 to Guts 3 is not actually valuable, but once you, once you get past this line, you're getting something every time you spend XP. So every point of gunnery is 2.5% uh, hit chance with your weapons, obviously very important. Everybody needs gunnery. Uh, but I'm going to push Reckless up the gunnery path very quickly because I want her to get both of the skills here. So the first skill is multi-target. Uh, when, you, when you attack, you can fire each of your weapons at a different target. Each weapon can only target one enemy, even the missile pods that fire multiple missiles, all of those missiles have to go at the same guy. But since each mech has multiple guns on it, you know, you can you can split your damage uh, if it makes sense to do so. And it often will. It'll often be the case that there's, like, one enemy who's very damaged and you know you'll finish him off with just one or two of your guns. And you'd like to devote some of the rest of your strength to other enemies. Also, uh, anytime you shoot at an enemy, it strips one of their eva evasion charges. So sometimes you will fire a weak weapon at an enemy that you don't intend to hit just to try to crowd it into the fire of your other mechs. There's a lot of good uses for multi-target. It's a powerful skill. Uh, yes, confirming this ability selection is permanent. You can only have two primary abilities and one specialist ability. So again, primary abilities are this column. Specialist abilities are this column. Training confirmed, Commander. Waiting All right. Orders. And then other people have some amount of XP saved up. Let's see. I, 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 know, I know they rebalance some of the skills here, so... Bulwark causes cover or guarded to get you up to 40% damage reduction, and you get up to 60% if you have both of them. This is a lot less powerful than Bulwark used to be, uh, which is probably fine. Bulwark was, was pretty good before. And up here, Coolant Vent. This unit will vent 50 extra heat this round, but then will regain 8 heat in the next three rounds. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure what we want to do with anybody else. Nobody else really has much of, like, an identity mechanically. Commander. So somebody's going to have to be uh, the puncher. I'm going to want somebody to be a puncher. <clears throat> and punch mechs, you want, you want some piloting and some guts. We could maybe have that be what Razor does. Somebody's got to drive the mech whose job is just to run forward at the enemies and slam a big metal fist into them. And we'll talk about why that's important yes, as we get closer to it, but it is something I'm looking for. All right, Rocky, you didn't even come on the mission. You don't have any XP. Good to go. So piloting increases your base melee hit chance. Uh, it also will increase your move speed. For I really don't know what I want to do with anybody. You know what? Maybe we'll... Uh, Maybe we'll just buy a little bit of gunnery on everyone, because gunnery is always good. Yeah, I'm just going to buy a little bit of gunnery on everyone, and then we'll, uh, we'll figure it out in the future. Yes, Commander. Obviously, everybody likes to hit with their weapons. Good to go. Okay, you are high enough level that all of your stuff is too expensive. Alright, so... Uh, before we do anything else, let's jump back out to the Argo screen and talk about score. I guess I can enter the scoreboard from anywhere. So, we're trying to achieve a high score. This is the, the goal of this is just to make the number go up. So, this is a list of the scoring criteria. Uh, we make points off of uh, earning money. Every 10,000 C-bills we earn, we get a point. You get 50 points per point of difficulty for each contract you complete. So to the left of the uh, to the left of the pipe here, we have our current earned value on this. Um, I guess a a skull is two points of difficulty because there are half skull missions. So each half of a difficulty skull is one point of difficulty. Uh, I don't know what the, the is the number to the right. Maybe the maximum number of points you can earn. It seems like point, uh, contract points and C-bills would not necessarily be capped, though, right? I don't know. Uh, for each unique mech chassis in your mech bay or cargo hold, you get 1,273 points. Seems like kind of an odd number. That might be a number that has some significance in the battle tech lore, maybe? 
get an additional 10,000 points for each weight class that you get every mech of. And yeah, see, this this is what makes me think that this is a, uh, a potential scoring cap, because there are four classes of mech, so you would only be able to get 40,000 points off of this. Uh, for collecting one of each unique chassis in the game, you'll get an extra bonus of 25,000 points. Okay, so we definitely want to have a diverse squad. For each 100 points of experience earned by a pilot in your barracks, you gain two points. The commander does not live in the barracks, and so does not count toward this score. For each star system you visited, you get 500. For visiting every star system, you get 25,000. So basically, we want to do the hardest missions we can do. We want to go everywhere. And it's not, um... Not particularly mysterious. Just go out and play Battletech. Uh, for each point of positive reputation with any faction, 100 points. For each point of negative reputation with any faction, 100 points. So we are not in the business of making people feel neutral about us. I want everybody to have strong, strong feelings. For each faction with whom your reputation is at the maximum or minimum value, another 50,000 points. Uh, so see, this is interesting, because, like, this has a 50,000 listed here. But obviously, the cap for scoring on this should not be 50,000. Because there's de definitely more than one faction. Yeah, I'm not sure what the number after the mark is supposed to be. Uh, for each completed upgrade to the ship, we get 2,000 points. For completely upgrading the ship, we get 25,000. For each point of morale we have, we haven't really talked about our morale, but currently our morale is at 25. Um, for each point of mercenary re review board reputation, you get 45 points. For maxing out your MRB rating, you get 25,000 points. Okay, so I like this big list of different things that are worth points. It feels a little bit uh, board gamey to me. So we are just going to, uh, we're going to work hard to optimize our score. And mostly what that means is doing missions, going to planets, buying robots. Building robots. So you, we don't necessarily have to buy them. Speaking of robots, let's talk about our robots. So, uh, you can see I messed with our colors a little bit. Have, wow, that, uh, <laughs> that paint job is pretty wild on the Jenner. I was not expecting the brightness of that. The mech they give you to test your paint job on in the captain's quarters is a little bit larger and more beat up looking than these ones are. Yeah, it looks a little bit more like this. Large portions of it were unpainted. I didn't realize how bright it was going to appear on some mechs. So we can change our loadouts. We can we can equip new items or equip new weapons and stuff. But any job, any any changes we make, any repairs or changes that we make are going to cost first of all money and second of all time. We're going to have to actually let uh, Yang, our mechanic, uh, work on stuff over time. So unfortunately, I think we don't want to upgrade any of our mechs right now because I think we want to just do all of the jobs that are available here. They all seem pretty straightforward uh, and doing them is worth money. Money and points. And then once we uh, once we wrap up here, we'll queue up a bunch of uh, a bunch of repairs and changes and then we'll travel to a new system and Yang can get work done while we're traveling. I think that'll be the best way to optimize our time. So, I think it, it makes sense to just do every job that is available to us until we take damage such that uh, we need repair time anyway, right? So I guess let's uh, take on the last mech standing job here. A lance of Capellan battle mechs has been rampaging in Merrick territory on Claybrook. They've been raising population centers, burning fields and refineries, looting storage facilities, they're clearly doing everything they can, uh, everything they can think of to drive our people out. This is terrorism, pure and simple. We need you to find them and destroy them. No escape and no prisoners. It's not really that easy to take prisoners with uh, giant mechs. Turns out force mitigation is a, is a tricky thing. Well, let's get in here and negotiate. I should note, so there's a couple of different mission types. This is just go, go here and fight those guys. Uh, and it's in a jungle biome. Lush plant life and varied fauna are often trademarks, along with hotter than comfortable temperatures. Okay, uh, the temperature being higher than usual and it being humid and stuff may have negative effects on our ability to sink heat. So I'm a little worried about that. Uh, these very low skull missions, I'm wondering if it's even worthwhile to negotiate hard for salvage. Like, there may just not be uh, very good stuff available to us. So I think let's, uh, let's just keep it at one piece of priority salvage in case we do see something really cool. 
But let's try to let's try to maximize our money from the jobs that we uh, we take here on this really easy planet. We'll worry about salvage a little bit more when we start seeing more impressive enemies. All right, our, uh, the thing we ran last time worked just fine. I, I think we probably don't want to make any changes here until we get a hold of some better mechs or some better weapons or something. So this episode is probably just going to be uh, some rapid fire little missions here to get us on our feet. We have enough money to run the mercenary company as it stands for several months, but uh, you're going to find that our costs are going to go up sharply over time. The more mechs you have to manage uh, and the more pilots you have to take care of, obviously, the more uh, the more money you're laying out. And then we also probably will want to start paying our people better as soon as we can afford to do that because morale is important, or at least it used to be. It looks like... Uh, Looks like it, the way the way morale is handled and what it does may have changed a little bit. Command interface initiated. All right, your lands against the opposing forces. Intel says they're near your current location. Move in and clear them out. All right, we can do this. So uh, one of the what morale used to do was it used to set your starting resolve level here. So maybe now that it it seems to no longer do that, maybe it's not as important as it once was. Also, I think this I think this biome is new with the expansion. It looks really nice. All right, as ever, we need to uh, need to move forward carefully here. I don't want to set off the enemies before we've figured out exactly how we're going to approach. So I kind of want the Jenner. Yes, boss. Jenner has jump jets, right? Yeah. How much jump range? Considerable jump range. Okay. So what I might do with most of our mechs is try to come around this way. Remember, we don't all have the ability to jump, so we need to make sure that we uh, we go in a direction that has a path along the ground to the uh, to the target. I guess maybe the rest of the mechs have to come right up the center here then. It looks like that should be mech traversable. So maybe the Jenner wants to move around this side then. Copy that. We'll have the Jenner come around over here and then surprise jump up the cliff. Moving out. All right, the commando is the one who doesn't have jets. I mean, it's not the end of the world. If the commando has to stand back at range and just fire the large laser, obviously that's not a huge problem. Large laser is a pretty okay weapon. Oh, I actually, I wasn't even noticing because of the angle that we're watch that we were uh, that we started out. I didn't notice how sheer this cliff was. Well, some of us can jump over. Engaging jump jets. Enemy oh, we got something. Okay, a couple of readings. Not necessarily anything to get worried about. A spore field. Units standing in spore fields suffer an additional 20% damage when hit due to the corrosive effects, but plus four difficulty to hit units that are in the spore cloud. Interesting. I think we'll uh, we'll try to avoid that for now. Let's just jump into the trees. I'm wondering how... Obviously, if I'm within sensor range, they're going to know where I am. We can't really sneak up on them. But the goal of this is to provide us with a couple of different firing angles. Mostly just to, like, stress them out. It actually looks like it's going to be non-trivial to, uh... Confirmed. To run across here. The Centurion may show up late to battle. That's alright. We'll be okay. Especially if they reveal themselves on the cliffs up here. We might honestly be able to hit a large laser shot from there. It is a really, really long range weapon. I'm receiving you. Yeah, we can get him from down here. Uh okay, so you can see here this icon. That icon occurs where there is a where there is terrain blocking line of sight, and you can see uh, the line becomes sort of a dimmer color there. 
That is telling us that we do not have a we do not have a very clean shot on him. Only 30% to hit from here. Can we get a spot? If we stand down here in the water, we'll uh we'll have a little bit cleaner. Only 35% to hit though. Still, it might be worth going for it just to strip some of some of his evasion. Then again, the large laser also hits hard. Maybe we want to use somebody else to strip his evasion first so that we're more likely to hit with the laser. Uh, also, notice the water. Uh, the uh, the nodes that are in water are blue, indicating that uh, water increases your heat sinking ability. The water carries off heat more effectively than air does, which is pretty powerful. Receiving you. Well, let's start by moving the panther into a better shooting position. Well, no, if I'm going to strip evasion uh, so that any weapon can land, it's probably the PPC that I want to land most. I'm here. So yeah, Centurion, just get over here and uh, get over here and find your shot. I'd like to get a position where I can... Yeah, we can't get a clean shot and also get two evasion charges. I would rather have the evasion right now, since we don't think this shot's likely to hit anyway. Mostly we're firing here just to strip a little bit of his evasion. If this does hit, it's a lot of damage relative to the health of a commando. Alright, gun down to one charge. <laughs> yes, thank you, Centurion. We all saw. I'd be very surprised if the enemy lance was actually only two mechs. I'm pretty, uh, pretty curious about where the rest of them are. So the question is, do I want to jump up now, or do I want to keep heading around the outside? Uh, it looks like it, the terrain gets pretty hard to move through, so I suppose we ought to jump up now. I cannot get to a position where I actually have vision, but I can get up here and at least Firing threaten them. We're in cover, we have a ton of evasion, uh, and then I'm just going to brace. So if you, uh, if you just moved and you don't want to shoot, you can brace. It gives you the guarded trait and in the entrenched trait, so you'll be... Difficult to damage and difficult to knock over, and guarded does stack with cover, so we are now at 40% damage reduction. <coughs> okay, here we go. The rest of them were just further back. Oh, and they've got some long-range missile pods. Well, I mean, technically they hit us. Standing by. Didn't really matter very much, though. I'm debating just reserving here so that we can uh, we can move the panther after Reckless so that we will know this thing has no armor left, or has no evasion left. I think that's probably what we're going to do. Alright, Reckless wants to get aggressive. What is the best way to do that? I would love it if I could jump up into the trees... Yeah, it looks like no such luck here. So, what's my shot look like from here? That's not bad, really. That small laser is going to be very, very difficult to use. You have to be really, really close to enemies for that, and obviously inside of the optimal range of some of our other weapons. I think I might just take the shot from here, honestly. Okay, so, we destroyed the right side of his torso. Every mech has uh, three torso sections. If you destroy the center torso, it just kills the mech, obviously, because all of the pieces fall apart. If you destroy the side torso sections, uh, first of all, obviously, you destroy any components that are in them. Uh, secondly, that the arm on that side falls off, so any components that were in there are lost. And if you destroy a torso section, it also deals damage to the pilot. You do not want to be that close to the exploding parts of a giant robot. Uh, I think I'm just going to fire from here. Like, I don't know that I want to advance. I want them to come to me a little bit. Now we have a good 70% chance to hit. Uh, also, once, the, once a section of the robot is missing, 
shots that would hit that section are instead directed toward the center of the bot. So, like, if a robot's arm is missing and you would hit that arm section, it instead goes to the relevant torso, uh, the, the torso on that side. If the torso on that side is destroyed, it redirects to the, uh, to the center. So we're much more likely to hit this guy's center torso now, which has, unfortunately, 52 total health. So we know the PPC won't kill him. Uh, one thing that PPCs do that is not super obvious here is they, uh, they impose an aim penalty. You can see he has this effect on him. Sensor's impaired. Yeah, just shoot him. Okay. Sheared his left arm clean off. I don't think that thing has very many weapons left. And we did quite a bit of stability damage to him over the round. So you can see the, the yellow meter down here is his stability. If it's past the little white tick mark, then the robot is said to be unstable. Uh, unstable robots can be knocked over Commander. by powerful enough attacks if you fill the stability bar entirely. But a robot cannot be knocked over by an attack that fills the stability bar if it wasn't already unstable before the attack. At least, this is all how I remember it. Keep in mind, all of my mechanic stuff is, this is how I remember it. So I kind of don't want to run forward. I think... Standing by. I wonder if we should just reserve everybody. I kind of want them to come to me. See, right now we have a lot of evasion charges and good cover and stuff because we, we moved a lot. We moved very aggressively last turn. I think I'm actually just going to reserve the whole uh, the whole company. Holden for tactical advantage. The Jenner right now is in a pretty, uh, pretty tough state. Okay, they're going after the Vindicator instead. That's fine. The Vindicator has more armor than uh, several of our other mechs put together. Well, whatever that is, it is uh, very fast moving. As you can see, the armor on our on our left arm here is starting to take a real beating. Let's right. do this. I'm gonna have the Jenner move up first so that we can get some uh, get some intel here. Take a nice raised position where I can see everybody. This is putting me in harm's way a little bit, but I'll have cover and three evasion charges, so hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can make this work. Heading out. So what exactly do we have here? We have a Locust running two LRMs and a medium laser. We have another commando with a standard loadout. Yeah, this commando is just a single short-range missile pod, so it's effectively out of the fight. We don't need to stress too much about that. My thinking is that the Locust is maybe the next most dangerous thing. The large laser uh, can certainly do some damage. But also, this commando is available as a target to the other people much more easily. That said, the Locust has a ton of evasion, and we're probably not really going to be able to go after it as a team very effectively. Right, who else can actually get up here? If Reckless were to jump her mech, she could probably make it. So we could try stripping the Locust of a bunch of his evasion charges to go after him. Uh, but I think for right now, let's just focus on the other commando, which I think we can certainly kill. Tropical biomes increase a unit's heat sinking ability by 10%. Thick moisture clinging to exhaust vents improves efficiency. Okay, fair enough. I was worried about the, uh, the temperature being listed as high, but apparently it's not a problem. And we have enough resolve to use an ability, but I think I'm going to try to just bank it over to, uh, to over 50% to get that passive accuracy bonus. Firing all weapons. Alright, so you can see, because we're to his right, we're hitting the right side, mostly. Something good. Uh, your position relative to the enemy enemy max actually matters a lot. Uh, let's get let's get Reckless up here and see what we can do. Actually, it looks like I don't have to jump to get clean line of sight on these enemies. If I did jump, I wouldn't actually be able to make it into the forest. But I would end up with four evasion charges. I have no heat at all right now. Yeah, let's, uh, let's jump forward. I want to get aggressive here. And with the amount of armor we have on us, I think I can afford to do that. Alright, so my left arm is pretty busted up. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna 
space myself so that my left arm is away as away from them as possible while still keeping my firing arc able to see all three enemies because I think we may want to uh, may want to engage in some multi-target here. We'll designate that as target A, that is target B, and that is target C. Let's figure out how we actually want to do this. So I think I want to just fire one weapon at target C, not because I think we're going to be able to do any meaningful damage to it, but because I want to strip an evasion charge. And remember, we don't actually have to hit to do that. Let's maybe make the LRMs that thing, since they have the lowest potential damage of all of our weapons. And then I think, actually, I'm just going to dump everything else into target B. This, uh, the commando that we've knocked both the arms off of is such a non-factor at this point. Engaging multiple targets. Okay, it's pretty good. Clean center shot. He has 14 center health left. We'll just throw this over here to strip an evasion charge in case that's meaningful. Commander. This really is not a very difficult mission, huh? So remember, we do not have the ability to multi-target on any of our other mechs. I think I'm going to jump up to here, Copy that. generating a lot of heat very quickly right now, but something tells me we're very close to done. I think we just drop everything on the the other commando. I think we can finish this guy off. Firing a full salvo. Yeah, it would have been. It would have taken a miracle for his center torso to survive that hit. So if you if you uh, destroy torso portions, it reduces the amount of salvage you get. Commander? If you can uh, disable a mech without destroying any of the torso, you can get uh, you can get the full mech as loot. This is the only angle from which we have a clean shot. I'm just try to finish this guy off, since the commando can't do anything else of use this turn. Oof! Still not a very good shot. It might be worth using Precision Strike here. I know I said I was going to go for that passive aim bonus, but we're so close to finished with the battle already. And with him, on, with uh, with us doing 40 damage on our attack, a hit to either the left, uh, a hit to the left torso completely shears it off. We won't quite be able to kill him from here, unfortunately. Well, uh, let's go for the left torso then. Where's the where's that SRM pod? Is it in the center? It is. Where's he keeping the ammo? He's keeping the ammo in the left torso section. So if we can take the uh, if we can take out his ammo pod, he won't be able to fire the missile launcher at all. Oh right, he's guarded. Not actually lethal. Wow, a headbutt. I don't know if I would try that with a locust against a mech that is this size. Well, the good news is, yes, Commander. he's left himself open to rear fire, so if we zoom in a little bit here, it'll be more obvious. There's an indicator around the enemy mech that tells you which quadrant you'll be firing into uh, with any given weapon. I think we can just run up on this guy right here, and... Mechs are almost always uh, less heavily armored in the back. Really, only 35%. Yeah, I guess he really moved a lot, and he's small. But with this number of shots, we're pretty likely to do some damage. So let's see, it would take 32 to the back center to actually kill it. I'd have to hit twice. You know, that's actually, it's totally possible. Okay, well, we knocked his arm off. Critical hit. We actually hit quite a bit there, but unfortunately, it was spread out over all of his different sections, so he didn't go down. Ready for orders. Let's see if we can't maybe uh, finish off the other guy before he gets his turn. Roger that. Try to set my facing such that I'm as forward to the locust as possible, just in case. But I think the uh, the SRM pod should be able to finish this off. And we'll fire the PPC, even though it's not likely to hit. Actually, the SRM pod's probably not, not going to finish him, but it's going to uh, take out his left torso. Because we're firing into his left firing quadrant. 
Did I not hit the left torso at all? Did I completely... I somehow completely missed the part of the mech that was close to me. That's inconvenient. Roger. Well, I would love to finish him off before he gets to shoot his missiles, just to avoid any, uh, any unfortunate shenanigans. We're actually close enough now that I can fire all of my weapons here, too. One hit point. Fire in. Okay, there we go. So now his mech is hit, only able to deal melee damage. He has no no guns of any kind anymore. And the melee damage that a mech, a mech deals is in large part a function of its mass. So these little tiny mechs are really, really bad at that. Melee does accomplish a couple of interesting things, though. Uh, number one... Meleeing a mech removes the guarded status from it if it is if it has uh, gotten guarded by uh, by bracing or whatever, uh, and also it is it is a significant amount of damage that all goes to one location, so it can help you uh, help you break through heavy armor quickly. I think I'm just gonna punch the locust because I'm really not afraid of this thing anymore, and also it's fun to punch robots with other robots. I, I know why they do it, because <laughs> it is enjoyable. So our small laser is a support weapon. Whenever you uh, do a melee attack, all of your support weapons get to fire, in addition to the big robot punch. So the chance of our melee attack hitting is 80%. Feel pretty good about that. It removes guarded, deals damage. Oh yes, uh, melee attacks do a significant amount of stability damage. But also, sometimes you just put the arm of your robot... <laughs> yes, good shooting. Sometimes you just put the arm of your robot clean through the enemy. Destroyed. And then who cares about stability? Alright, so we've all reached the inspired status. I think they're, uh, they're gonna come over and headbutt one of our smaller mechs. Mailing the big guy didn't really accomplish very much. They did hit center there. Unfortunately, we just have way too much armor for a melee attack from a commando to be meaningful. How's it going? Alright, can we just clean this up real fast? Hard for me to believe that he's going to survive this. And I mean, there's absolutely no reason not to use precision strikes since hitting here ends the battle. Uh, we are going to overheat a little bit, and overheating does do some structural damage, so maybe let's not fire everything. Engaging target. So we're not going to get a lot of good salvage here. We we were very destructive mission while completing this mission. If you want to get a lot of salvage, uh, in order to preserve the torso, realistically, you want to uh, you want to destroy the head of the enemy mech is the best thing, but that's not going to happen. Realistically, you want to destroy the legs. A mech that has uh, that has no functional legs is a lot easier to take apart at your leisure. Again, no actual meaningful damage, no injuries to any of our mech warriors, so there's no reason for us not to just roll straight into the next mission. Uh, is there an item here that I actually care about? Not really. I don't I don't think I want to put together a commando. I guess we don't have a locust, and there is a there is a uh, point reward. There's a score reward for completing lots of different types of mechs. We certainly don't need a medium laser. We're going to have no problem accumulating medium lasers over the course of the game. Let's just take this for now. And we got the medium laser anyway. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Total six, we got every piece of salvage. There wasn't a lot left. The Isanguine Behemoths are not known for, uh, not known for their subtlety or their restraint. Again, that nickname comes from somewhere, right? Not necessarily reckless in combat, but reckless in a lot of other ways. Alright, yep. Yeah, absolutely no reason not to just plow right into the next mission. Darius, what do you got for us? Uh, unfortunately, these are all going to be pretty low score, but it seems like they're also going to be functionally zero cost. So, Commander, we're trying to safely transport injured personnel to one of our facilities on Claybrook. Unfortunately, satellite surveillance has shown pirate units operating in the region we're expecting to move our medical convoy through. 
We need a mercenary lance to sweep the area and eliminate any pirate units. Please think of this contract as a mission of mercy. Now, uh, it is worth noting that we're working for the Capellan Confederation here, so we're going to reverse our uh, reputation trend with them a little bit, and we would like to be Max or Min with everybody, but I think we'll have plenty of time to fix this. Also, Darius doesn't believe that Mission of Mercy line for a second. I was thinking that that's a, that's a strange thing to say. I think they, they doth protest a little bit too much. Uh, I certainly don't care about my reputation with the local pirate organization, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Again, I'm, I'm really only looking for one piece of priority salvage. I guess we can jack up our price a little bit, that being the case. This is 0-2. Yeah, we still do want bulk parts. I think this is fine. And who knows, maybe there'll be like one piece of good gear on the enemy squad. Uh, I believe it is the case that if you see a piece of nice gear and you avoid destroying that body part, it'll uh, make sure that the gear does appear in the salvage, uh, salvage screen. You can destroy enemy components during battle, which is a fine thing to do if you are afraid of the damage they will deal with those components, and somewhat less good of an idea if you want those components for yourself afterward. That said, I'm the, these half skull missions, I'm expecting these to be very easy, stuff we can just shoot through real quick. Uh, but it makes sense, every time we go to a system, it makes sense to do every mission we can manage to pull off there. Because they are all worth points in various ways. Also, I suppose the money, the money is important. Alright, this is the area where the pirates were spotted, move forward, clear them out. Pretty straightforward. Probably pretty straightforward. I suppose I shouldn't treat that as a guarantee. So we're thinking up here. Boy, it sure would be a bummer if they had the high ground and we had to run up toward them. Coordinates received. Yeah, what do we got? Okay, reading something in the trees over there. Uh, the commando... Let's see, we could get into some rough terrain here. There's also a marsh, which gives you stability damage reduction. We haven't really seen a lot of stability damage stuff, so we don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, although it is a bad idea to run across rough terrain, because more stability damage... Obviously, taking more damage of any type is bad. Uh, okay, so you can see, we only get to turn a certain amount from our last direction of movement. So it really, really does matter, especially at the Hi. end of your movement range. It matters how you are getting to where you are going, but in this case, I think we're going to be fine. Alright, I'm glad he's going first. That is a Jenner. It has run out into the open and braced. That's okay. I'm not too worried about that. Who wants to get up there and start things off? He doesn't have a lot of evasion charges. Ready for orders. Commander? I think this can be this can be Centurion's job. So can she see him from any cover position? I would love to take the shot without having to run out into the open. Although, running out into the open with three evasion charges is at least not totally suicide. But you know what? I'm going to maybe... I'm going to reserve everybody here. He's not alone. Standing right? By. Let's see if we can get a little bit more information. I'm going to reserve again. If there are any other enemies moving around outside of sensor range, I want to give them a chance to come forward like this. So that we have a little bit more knowledge of where is and is not safe to stand. And I mean, at this point, there's literally, there's no value in me going on two when I could just go on one. Just in case there are any other enemies who need to take their turns, and it looks like there are. Okay, we took a single long-range missile there. So right, like, it's good to let the enemy shoot at you while you still have a lot of ev evasion charges. This turn, some of us are probably going to move less because we don't want to sprint, we want to be able to move and fire. So I was trying to make sure that we got full value out of all these evasion charges. Waiting for orders. So those rockets came from, or the missiles came from over here somewhere. We know whatever this was, it doesn't move on four, and Centurion will move on uh, on four again. So I think we can we can safely run up here. The only thing that's going to get a turn between then between Centurion's turn now and Centurion's next turn 
is potentially the Jenner. Yeah, this is fine. Order My sensors have something. Alright, so I am reading two enemies over here. Only one of them fired at us, though, which suggests that uh, the other one doesn't have any missiles. Or at least no long-range missiles. Alright, let's just try to get lucky. Engaging target. Wow, pretty good start. So she she sheared the armor, clean off of his uh, his front and his leg, and she crit his short range missile pod, so it's less likely to hit us. I believe a damaged a damaged component loses accuracy. Jenner can not quite get far enough behind him to shoot that back quadrant. Look at how close that line of effect is to the back quadrant. We're so, so close. Well, if I can't make it with even a jump, I think we walk instead of jumping to preserve heat. Because we are about to fire all of this thing's weapons. It's going to is going to be costly. On my way. Yep, so you can see here, uh, this is the amount of heat that you will have at the end of the turn, I believe. I think it takes into account your natural venting capacity. I think some of this is going to hit. Unfortunately, we're on the side that didn't take any damage from the Centurion's Volley. Giving them everything I've got. Well, we're doing a really good job of spreading our damage out evenly over all of his parts, which is absolutely not the way you want to do things. And I wish we could get the panther into a position where I could see him from over here. I wonder if it's worthwhile to... Um, I wonder if it's worthwhile to just spend this turn sprinting instead to get a better position, because the panther has a powerful gun, but it's also a pretty lightly armored mech. I guess... I think of it as a lightly armored mech relative to all the mechs I know are in the game. Relative to the stuff we're seeing now, it's actually not that bad. Now let's get into position and take the shot. I copy. It's especially valuable to hit him with the PPC uh, because it will reduce his ability to do damage to us, obviously. Also, a center torso hit with the PPC is lethal right now. That would be awfully nice. Acknowledged. Okay, we got one of his arms. Solid connection on that one. Uh, fortunately, two of the lasers are in each arm on the uh, the default design of the Jenner, so that really reduces his offensive capabilities. I think we probably want to just keep working on him. I, I would really love it if we could get him down. So if I jump, the, what I'm thinking here is that. This position, one of these positions up here, offers a cleaner line of sight to him. This position is obstructed, but gives us all that cover. We have an unobstructed jump here, but I'm wondering if, uh, with the Vindicator here, if we actually want to jump into the open, because the Vindicator is way tougher than everything else on the field, and I kind of want them to shoot at this. I want to draw fire away from the commando and everything, so I'm gonna, I'm going to intentionally jump into a more vulnerable position here, in the hopes of drawing off their fire. And we may as well let this guy have it with everything. We could choose not to fire the LRM since it's most likely gonna miss. It does change the amount of heat that we generate pretty significantly. Yeah. All right. Let's skip that. Oh, that's a shame. That PPC shot was a big deal. Alright, so they're on 4432. Jenner's just at a full sprint, which is unfortunate. So now that we know that they're in range, it's a little bit less valuable for me to just yes, sit here in the open, obviously. I'm going to uh, challenge this guy. Let's see what his deal is. Gotta get that intel. Uh, we will eventually be able to pick up the ability to actually lock on enemies with our sensors and figure out what's up with them without having to get visual. But not a thing we have just yet. So this is a Galleon. Two small lasers and a medium laser. Really not a very dangerous enemy at all. 
31 frontal health, less on the sides. Uh, the large laser is, is pretty likely to just kill him straight up. Yep. Vehicles are always uh, a little bit less dangerous than Vehicle mechs, down. but the smaller vehicles are particularly not dangerous. <laughs> Okay, they got a panther, which is a little unfortunate, because it means they have a particle cannon on their side, but they did miss with it. It seems like particle cannons are uh, remarkably hard to aim. That is my takeaway from everything that has happened so far in this campaign. As you can see, the Jenner has a ton of evasion charges because of the full sprint. I'm content letting that thing run for now, actually. Receiving you. Let's try to damage out the other enemies that we see here. I might want to reserve our own panther because it's so far back. I think it's relatively Good safe right now. I think we're going to reserve everybody here. I want to let that thing come in toward us a little bit. Although, you know what? Maybe it's not going to. It's possible that it will be content to just sit back and fire at us with the long-range missile pods. Let's see if Reckless can get vision of it. Nope. Alright, well, that being the case, then, um, I don't think it hurts us to reserve until after it. I want to see if it's going to come forward. Okay, it is a vehicle, so I'm a lot less concerned than I once was. It is not the case that vehicles are always not scary. Ooh. Okay. So you can see, uh, Reckless has three hit points. She lost one there because the cockpit took a missile hit. That's a little bit of a shame. Alright, who am I most concerned about? I think I want to deal with the Panther. That's a pretty important target to be rid of. This is part of the danger of that, hey, let's stand in the open and be a distraction strategy, is that uh, if you move in such a way that makes the enemy want to shoot you, uh, they are likely to shoot you. So I'm going to jump here, even though it doesn't give us a ton of extra distance, but I want the evasion charges and the cover. And then uh, let us have at this guy. Do I want to shoot anything at the Jenner? I think I'm going to... Uh, let's go multi-target. Do this, and we'll put the LRMs on the Jenner just to strip an evasion charge. Alright, come on, show me a real clean hit on that Panther. Engaging. Awesome. That is exactly the sort of thing I was talking about. Right torso is almost damaged out. Oh, hey, I actually hit with one of the missiles. And if I'm not mistaken, the right torso is where the PPC is on that thing, isn't it? Uh, no, it's in the right arm. Okay, cool. So we definitely want to shoot into the right quadrant, which we are, yeah, we're going to be able to do if we take the shot from over here somewhere. Yeah, we get a much cleaner shot if we jump. You gotta be careful with heat generation on something that's using a particle cannon. These things generate 35 heat every time you shoot them. But I think it is well worth it to make sure we have a clean shot here. So, uh, it would take one SRM, one missile shot hitting the right torso would clean it out. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to determine the order that the projectiles hit. It would be really cool if we could fire the SRMs first and then wait a second see what the result was. Uh, but damage does just uh, does just carry yeah. through. Like, the fact that we only dealt 5 damage to his uh, to his torso with the PPC because it only had 5 HP left does not prevent us from dealing damage uh, to the... Like, the, the rest of the damage from the PPC does still carry through to the torso, I believe. These guys are all a lot less dangerous than they once were. The main things that we want to deal with now are the Jenner and the Striker. The Striker has quite a few missiles, and SRMs are dangerous. At 8 damage per missile, an SRM pod, an SRM 6 does quite a lot. The Jenner still has an SRM 4 and 2 medium lasers. I think I'm more worried about the Jenner still, even though I know it's, it's all torn up. I think I'm more worried about two medium lasers and the SRM pod than I am about an SRM and an LRM. Uh, and I think I'm I think I'm cool spending some resolve here. 
So we're hitting it from the uh, from the left side. Uh, like I said, if we aim for the left arm and connect, the damage will just carry through to the left torso. Unfortunately, the left torso is the most armored part of him. Uh, he was smart to move such that this was the only side we could actually aim at. I think I'm going to try to take his leg out, though. If you completely destroy a robot's leg, it goes down. Targeting for an alpha strike. That looks like a lot of really high hits. Okay. Reporting. Critical hit. So it took a... Uh, the pilot took a point of damage because we destroyed that torso section. And then another point of damage because we destroyed the leg, which knocks down the... The thing entirely. And it getting knocked down has reduced its initiative by one, so it's going to go on two this turn. Remember, it, it usually goes on four. It lost an initiative to being hit by a called shot and then lost another initiative to knock down. So it's not getting back up. Uh, we will definitely be able to kill it before that happens. Do I want to just do that now? Well, I guess what I want to do now is put myself in a position to threaten all these guys with my myriad lasers. Copy that, Commander. What does the Panther have left? Just an SRM-4? Okay, so... We care about the striker next. Nat, 48 and 40. It's actually a pretty uh, a pretty hardy vehicle for this point in the campaign. Well, let's give him this. I wish I was shooting him from the front, because that front armor, that front section is where all the missiles are. I guess if we strip the armor off the front, it's dead anyway. Yeah, let's just hope that, uh, hope that that large laser scores a nice center left hit here. Not quite. Not quite enough. What's up, boss? Uh, I think I would like to get out here and be able to shoot at all three of them. I don't think they are likely to get a lot more turns, so I'm not too worried about running out into the open here. Let's see if we can finish off the striker with the particle cannon. There you go. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Part of the damage, part of the uh, problem with relying on a lot of different weapons to deal damage is that your different weapons are likely to hit a lot of different parts of the enemy, and spread out damage is bad. It's a lot of wasted damage. The Jenner is in terrible shape. I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let the Vindicator finish it off. Reckless with her multi-target can uh, can finish this guy off easily while still being able to put something into the Panther. Let's focus the Jenner on the Panther. It may be the case that there is no more Panther to worry about <laughs> by the time the Jenner's turn is over. But we do have to take it a little bit easy on the firing here. Because I am way overheat. One of the things I like a lot about missile pods is that they do not generate a tremendous amount of heat for their damage. Firing on target. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right. Let's talk about getting this Vindicator into this firing arc. Oh, we can only... If I move forward, I can only see one enemy at a time. In flight, we can turn all the way around, but I'm going to make it a lot harder for myself to fire all my weapons without doing structural damage to the Vindicator. Maybe we could just let the Panther have his turn. I'll just walk over here and take the easy shots. It would be nice if I did this from a position where I at least have the ability to shoot at both of them, though. Looks like it's not easy to find a spot where I can actually see... Uh, where I can see the panther to take the direct shot. Alright, well, I guess we're just getting indirect line of sight on the panther. Or, uh, indirect fire on the panther. Why did I jump? I could have walked. I totally forgot that I had jump selected. Alright, so you get the LRMs just to try to get a little bit of damage off. We definitely don't want to fire everything. I shouldn't need the PPC. Uh, now we can... If we just single target here. You get a free called shot on any, any downed enemy. You know, I think I want to take it easy this turn and just make sure this thing goes down. I won't fire the LRMs. Just take it nice and easy here. He has 20 health in his center torso. So I'm going to fire both lasers... We have a pretty high chance of getting one of these shots to the center, and either one of them is uh, is lethal. Alright. 
Easy enough. Now, unfortunately, that does mean this guy probably gets a turn. Yep. This is desperation, is what that is. Well, I mean, he did 50 damage. He wasn't going to be able to do that any other way. Commander. But now I suspect he is in some trouble. <laughs> Ricochet just going to moonwalk his Jenner into place. He's looking for those style points. Target lock on enemy three. Ooh, okay. okay so we... Good. Yeah, <laughs> He blew up the SRM ammo bin. Uh, when you when you critically hit ammunition uh, supplies, they have a chance to explode. Obviously, exploding ammo is not good for the health of the body part that the uh, that the explosion occurred in. A melee attack does fifty damage, and it would allow me to gen it would allow me to burn off all of my heat. It's pretty likely to just kill him. Yeah, I mean, this is this is extremely good if I manage to hit him with my melee in any part other than his right leg. I think we'll just do this. My into it. There you go. That's how you punch somebody with a tiny robot. I mean, I'm talking to him like he's going to learn a lesson here. He's definitely dead. Mission. Pirate units have been eliminated. The quote-unquote mission of mercy can continue. Yeah, I'm just going to keep my nose out of it for now. As long as they pay us. Alright, so Reckless is injured and is going to be out of commission for 22 days. Fortunately, we do have a pilot to step in for her. Uh, we don't really need any of this partial salvage. None of these weapons are anything special. SRM 6 pods are just generally good. I like them a lot. I think that's the, the thing we'll take as priority salvage. We can salvage a bunch of jump jets or heat sinks or whatever, but let's just do this. Got a heat sink and two medium lasers. Like I said, we're going to accumulate a ton of medium lasers over the course of the game. We don't have to worry about that at all. A lot of these basic components are just placeholders anyway. You can start to find components that have uh, pluses, extra stats on top of their base values. And that's the kind of stuff that we actually care about. Although there are a couple of pieces of gear that even without a plus... I am uh, very excited to find auto cannons in particular. I'm a big fan of. All right, well, let's keep going. Let's do one more. What else do we have here, Darius? So these uh, these contracts that have a little planet on them are travel contracts. This uh, this client is willing to pay us to come over to their world. The, these contracts take place on other worlds. So we will worry about those later. For right now, let's be humanitarians working for the local pirate organization. A convoy of pirate doctors ministering to those recovering from the recent conflicts here in Claybrook have become caught behind enemy lines when the ceasefire collapsed. A lance of mechs tasked with the rescue have gone missing, so we are desperate for assistance from anyone. Okay, I was like, humanitarians in the pirate organization? Pirate basically just means not affiliated with the local government, right? Uh, the fact that these guys are officially pirates doesn't necessarily mean anything about who they are as people or the kinds of things they engage in. Uh, so it's an escort mission. Reach a rendezvous point and protect a convoy of units as it moves to an exit region. The convoy will move quickly and could outpace slower mechs. Well, unfortunately, uh, we're just going to have to go with the mechs we have, right? We don't have a lot of choices to make here. And it's in a desert area. Extreme heat makes it more difficult for mechs to sink heat. Fields of crystalline mineral deposits may interfere with targeting systems. Yeah, alright, we can handle this. Desperation is good for business. I guess a broken ceasefire means we're likely to encounter military units, though. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, once again, I doubt there's going to be any meaningful salvage to pick up, so let's focus on the money. Uh, we could just back way off on everything and take reputation, but my suspicion is that we are not going to be able to max out our reputation with the local pirate organization, because we're going to be leaving this planet pretty soon. All right, and we'll just have Rocket step in for Reckless. Uh, it is a little bit of a shame to lose the multi-target, but what are you going to do? Do I want to maybe... I'm going to swap Razor over into that mech, actually. The extra gunnery skill is uh, is meaningful. Although I suppose two gunnery in the Panther with the PPC is kind of not great. 
Whatever, something tells me we shall persevere. But as you can see, it's possible to take meaningful damage on almost any mission. One of the things I like a lot about the combat design of this game is the fact that uh, it's very un it's very unlikely that you're going to get out without taking any hits at all. Every battle is to some degree a battle of attrition, uh, which means that there is time for you to get worn down. There is time for you to take an unfortunate hit to the head. Um, in a lot of tactics games, you know, uh, XCOM in particular I'm thinking of here, uh, you can finish enemy attacks without taking attacks from them and so the way they tune the difficulty is by making it so you must right to get attacked by an enemy in XCOM especially early in the campaign is to take a soldier's life into your hands here the the outcome of attacks is uh, a little bit more uh, it has a higher granularity you know convoys waiting just ahead move to their position provide support as needed Get them to safety, keep them intact, and get the hell out of there. We can do this. Probably we can Brown do this. As far as the eye can see. Yes, thank you, Ricochet. We all we all actually can see it. We all knew it was brown. But I appreciate him trying to... Oh, wow. Alright. Apparently we are going live right away. Well, let's have the Jenner head around to the other side a little bit. Heading out. And I'm a little wary of putting the commando in a super forward position. Let's make sure we have cover. So we have three contacts already. Three, three, two. A little worried about uh, four, three, three, two. A little worried about the heaviness of the thing that acts on two. Since there's no direct line of sight, I'm gonna I'm gonna let them come to us a little bit more. Now, of course, they have the option of refusing to come to us. Seems like they have chosen not to uh, not to take advantage of that. Now, every one that we let move is accumulating evasion charges and stuff, but I assume that because these guys have just been standing here, they're guarded and entrenched. And I would prefer that they move up, but yeah, maybe I should... Maybe we should get a little bit aggressive. I'm receiving you. Maybe I should not allow them to totally set the tempo of the battle here. All right, let's see what's up with this guy. He is guarded. He's not actually in cover, though. And he has three evasion charges. So yeah, even the guys who haven't moved yet are uh, are going to be hard to hit. We're probably not losing anything by letting them come forward anymore. Uh, so this is a fire starter. We haven't seen one of these before. It has a bunch of flamethrowers on it. Flamethrowers are support weapons, which means that the fire starter's deal is like it runs up and punches you in the side and then just covers you with flaming napalm. Uh, the flamethrowers don't do a ton of direct damage, but they drive your heat through the roof, which can cause system shutdowns, and there's a lot of bad stuff that can happen when you are covered in fire. Unfortunately, we are not super likely to hit, but I think I may take the shots anyway. We're going to generate a little bit of heat here, but we got to just start, uh, we gotta start getting some damage through. I am worried about the fire starter. I think this is an actual danger. Okay, we managed to hit with the large laser. Thing looks a little bit healthier than some of the mechs we've been fighting. Right, let's try to put try to put a little bit more threat onto him. So, oh, I can just barely get some cover. I'm not going to have a clean shot on the fire starter, but we will have vision of everybody. Yep, let's do this. Jump forward into this intel gathering position and hide in the ankle high brush. So unfortunately, that jump generated a lot of heat already. We have here laser galleon. Wow, just a, a single volley is going to overheat me. Another galleon, that fire starter, and a striker. Okay, so I'm not too too worried about the galleons. That that stuff we can we can hold off on. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna launch hard on the striker though. It'd be really cool if we could get rid of that, and I'm definitely not going to kill the fire starter from here. But we could kill this striker. That could actually happen. It's not in any uh, cover or anything. So if I can hit two small laser shots to the front, that'd be enough to kill it. Or like a small laser and most of the SRM pod or something. I think we have pretty good odds of killing this thing. Engaging with target. 
Oh. One of those small lasers hit the turret instead of the front armor. That's a shame. Yes, Commander. That could have been a kill. Alright, do I want two evasion charges or do I want cover? I probably want the evasion charges. Uh, we're not going to be able to avoid him hitting us with uh, with cover like, like the uh, the melee and the flamethrower shot. It's just going to work. But maybe you could wait. Let's have Razor move up. No, I want to I make sure I have a clean, an actual shot on the striker. We should be shooting at its front arc from here. Yeah. Oh, it looks like I still only have indirect... I, th I thought this position had direct fire on him. Ah, well. That means that I probably don't want to bother shooting at him at all, then. The damage potential is too low. Let's shoot this guy, strip some of his evasion. We might get a good hit. If the PPC lands, it could be really good. Alright, excellent. Center PPC shots. This thing has 15 center health. I would love to kill it right now before it gets to fire its flamethrowers at all. That would be, that would be wonderful. And I think I just want the evasion charges. Affirmative. How much center health does it have left? Alright, I'm gonna fire the SRMs even though the odds are pretty bad, because like even if the PPC misses, we could still get lucky and get two missiles to the center. Although actually, he has um, he has guarded, so it would have to be three missiles to the center. Well, let's hope the PPC solves it then. This should be good. That looks good. Yeah, alright. Just punch the center of the thing right out. All the limbs fall into a big pile on the ground. And we could probably salvage a bunch of those flamethrowers. And the striker is actually fleeing. So we're still going to take a hit from the LRM pod. Nothing we can do about that. But I love it backing off. Because that means we're, uh, we're not taking a bunch of high damage SRM hits. And then this turn, the Jenner probably wants to just run forward and get some melee off, because I need to not fire my guns for a turn. <laughs> Does it matter which one I hit? Probably not, right? I guess hitting this one exposes me to the SRMs a little bit more. Yeah. And I think other people, well, other people are going to be able to get clean shots on all of them, so that, that part doesn't really matter. Let's just hit this one. I am a little bit afraid of the short-range missiles. Okay, now it's on. All right, that got us to fifty resolve. Waiting for orders. So yeah, these things, uh, vehicles don't move fast enough to acquire much in the way of evasion charges. They generally cannot get guarded. They can get cover, but they often don't. And they're not they're not fast enough to reach good cover a lot of the time. They just there are a lot of downsides to being a tank fighting against giant humanoid robots. Alright. All of the shots went to the same location there, that was lucky. Commander? Alright, keep in mind this is not the end of the mission. We still have to do the escort part. There will probably be another little pod, is my guess. Roger. That is super cool to me. Every single time it happens, I am overjoyed. Take this. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> that PPC shot would have been really nice. I think it's remarkably fast. That said, I'm not 100% sure it was a good idea to drive this close to me. Waiting for orders. Can't quite get in melee range. But we can run up here, just have at him with the little lasers, or maybe even not bother. I kind of think I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to move forward and embrace, and then somebody can step on him next turn. We can save ourselves the heat. Getting for physical attack. 
Okay, so this should give us plenty of time to vent. Vehicle destroyed. If there is, in fact, another group of enemies, we will be in uh, we'll be in really good condition and very high spirits by the time we fight them. Heading out. Confirmed. I'm gonna stop just outside of the uh, the mission area here. Ten four. We get a turn of heat burning before things are potentially live again. Uh. Confirmed. Holding and cooling. Okay. I wanted to burn off that last little bit of uh, of heat yes, on the Panther. Yeah, alright, we're we're ready to go now. Let's have Stand Razor by. be the one who steps into the mission area and triggers the next step. Because that way we get the Jenner's Position whole move confirmed. to respond. Although it's possible nothing will happen until the end of our turn anyway. Yeah, okay, it's gonna let us finish moving forward. Alright. So unfortunately, that means I don't actually know where Ricochet needs to be. We'll go over here. Move order received. I don't know. I don't know where we where we have to escort them to. But this looks like the direction the road is in. Probably we'll go down here. All right, we've secured the area around the convoy's position. They're making their way toward the extraction point now. Just keep them alive. Keep in mind that the convoy will try to stay near you for protection. Continue advancing to get them to the extraction point. Yeah, which is just over there. That's not too bad. Apparently I have to wait for them to take all of their moves before I can start moving my own guys around. These are wheeled APCs. Do they have guns on them at all? I cannot select them to see. Copy that. Let's do this. They've actually made themselves uh, very inconvenient here. Or to generate a little bit of heat jumping over them. There. They're just like perfectly blocking the entire road. I am a. I'm. There's got to be another pack of enemies, right? I'm a little surprised that we don't already see something. Also, it kind of seems like when we're not in combat, maybe they could all move at the same time. That would be okay. Waiting for orders. Boy, which direction do I think the enemies are going to be in? Let's let's be facing this way. Oh, still no, uh, still no pickups, huh? I'm receiving you. Maybe they are waiting until Copy that, Commander. the dropship is inbound, and then they're gonna like spring the trap, try to lull us into a Roger. false sense of security here. Or maybe it's gonna turn out there isn't a trap, and the game's just trying to make me nervous. It's totally possible. It did happen in a couple of missions in the uh, previous campaign. Also, man, all this terrain just looks great. I know that uh, terrain, especially at a strategic view level, is not super hard to do, but I still think this game's aesthetics are really, really great. Alright, well, let's move the Jenner forward again, not into the path of the dropship, preferably. Oh, I'm so nervous about... Moving this far forward is, is going to mean that we're definitely not facing all positions an enemy could come from. Makes me a little... A little tiny bit concerned. Acknowledged. Trying to put sensors in all possible directions here. Acknowledged. I... Well, I think we're pretty much ready for a threat from any direction. Oh, these vehicles are going to get slowed down tremendously by the trees. Yeah, still nothing on the sensors. Weird. How's it going? Uh... 
Maybe Roger run that. over this way a little bit further? You know, there might just not be an ambush. It might be that there is not going to be an ambush. Got it. Make sure that as a group we are moving forward toward the evac zone. I'm not sure exactly how close to me they intend on staying. All right. I'll make sure if they're actually just like following the Vindicator that we move far enough into the zone that they can get in. All right, well, it looks like on their next move, they're going to make it. Maybe not all of them. These back two APCs are still pretty far out. Yeah, it kind of seems like there just aren't going to be any enemies. Confirmed. I don't want to separate the Jenner too much, but... Maybe they're just like the ambush is really far away. They're waiting waiting until they see the dropship to come forward. Or again, maybe there just isn't an ambush. Roger. Benton eat. Okay, here they come. Hard to say which side they're on in this war, but they're bound for your position. Yeah, I uh I think we can take a guess about which side they're on. Okay, yeah. So, so they literally just spawn into existence when the uh, when the first APC reaches the drop zone. Well, uh, I think we are reasonably well positioned for this. It looks like just two contacts, so they might be a little bit heavier. Also, it looks like we only have to survive for one round to get them into the uh, into the dropship. Oh no, they're not too heavy. They're moving on initiative four. Good to go. Well, Ricochet, do you maybe want to uh, get in here and show them what's what? I would like to get closer than this. It looks to me like I am not quite in optimal weapons range in this position, but... Well, it's dangerous to move forward, and that guy's in cover. I might actually uh, reserve here. I'm going to hold here. Watch out. Okay. Now I should be able to get weapons range while staying in cover. They got a Jenner of their own. GR7D stock loadout. Yep, nothing to worry about. He ran out into the open and not fast enough to gain evasion charges because he wanted to maintain uh, bracing range. Well, this should be easy enough. We can go ahead and precision shot and still stay well above the 50 resolve threshold, so no reason not to. Where are we going to aim? I could try to just take one of his legs off, or I could do my best to aim to center. He has 80 center health, which is a little bit higher than I would like. But yeah, let's just aim to center. Didn't quite make it. Kind of, Kind of spread the damage all over the place there. I'm assuming that even if the even if the APCs make it to the drop zone, we're still gonna have to finish fighting these guys. Maybe that's not a safe assumption. Surprise, laser bot! All right, give him the PPC. Let's uh, let's hope for a lucky center hit. Actually, center hit's not gonna kill him anyway. Now, Razor's pretty far back, but LRM pods have a very impressive range. I think I'm going to jump... Ooh, if I jump up here, I actually can get direct line of sight. Here we go. Might be able to get the PPC on him. Got it. Man, really? Did I hit the did I hit the undamaged leg with the PPC? That's a shame. I'm here. The only spot that I could hit without actually dealing damage. All right. Well, you probably just need to sprint forward. Affirmative. I was trying to be ready for them to come from any direction. 
Unfortunately, it was going to leave somebody out in the cold, no matter which direction they came from. Objective secured. All right, we'll get to the evac zone, but I'm not in a big hurry. I want to make sure we actually kill these enemies off. I want to get as many parts as possible here. So remember, this guy's initiative is lowered because of the... Uh, uh, the called shot we took on him. I'm taking some serious hits. All right, sensor impaired. Armor on the arm is weakened, but not enough to actually order. be scary. I'm gonna run in behind this guy just to let him know. Coordinates received. Can I fire everything? I can fire everything. Uh, we could go for a precision strike again, but no, we probably should. Uh, with me hitting his right side, though, it's not super likely that I'm going to be able to hit the center torso anyway. You know what? I'm going to call to the leg. Let's, let's make sure that leg goes down. Okay, that was, <laughs> that was some pretty real damage. So he's going to be all the way at one initiative now. I'm sure we can get something on him before he gets up. Yes, Commander. Uh, can the Centurion pull much of a shot here? We can get an obstructed shot from a couple of locations. It's like I can't back up enough to get a clean one. Order acknowledged. Probably, if I was standing far enough back to have a clean angle, I would be out of range. Alright, well, go for it. No sense not trying. If I were to precision strike him from here... Nah, we're just barely north of that uh, plus one accuracy threshold. We'll just keep our resolve up. Acknowledged. Hey, not bad. 58 center health. That is definitely fixable. Probably don't want to just run over and punch him. On center. Oh. Or just miss completely. I suppose that's good too. Scarred a critical hit. <clears throat> We're not anywhere near melee range, unfortunately. I could jump in really aggressively, but I'm worried about uh, I'm worried about my heat level. Maybe I should take a nice easy called shot here, not fire everything. Looks like we'll hold it just about our current level of heat. If the PPC hits center, this thing's just dead. That would be awfully nice. Copy that. Okay. Actually, it looked like just about everything hit center there. there. I was pretty lucky. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I was really hoping we'd get to go first. The Jenner could just unload into his backside. Alright, but obviously this is this is over. Path. And once again, no structural damage to any max, nothing that's gonna take any real time to repair. Acknowledged. Unfortunately, we're probably running a little bit too hot to be able to fire a full volley into his back. Yeah. This uh this extra heat is actually a real pain. Also, he's a little bit more vulnerable from the front than he is from the back at this point, because we've done considerable damage to that front center. Yeah, take that. <laughs> right in the jump jet that you definitely weren't going to use anyway. I actually want to try to be firing from his... just from the center front arc. How close? Okay, I don't want to close in that much. We want to be Ten four. want to be in the uh, the widest part of the um, range indicator. All right. Well, shoot. Maybe I should have precision striked there. Waiting for orders. Are we obstructed from here? Yeah, we are. 
Okay, I can get a clean large laser shot from here. Not Location awesome, confirmed. but... We're not going to bother precision attacking with this Welcome. one, though. We'll save it for the, uh, for the Vindicator. I want to get a precision strike while still being above... Or at or above 50 resolve. Alright. Let's do this, shall we? I guess I could move forward a little bit. Begin to small laser range. Uh, but I don't want to damage the range on my PPC. The PPC is way more important. Firing on target. Okay, well... That head hit does open up the ability for us to maybe take him down without destroying the center torso of that mech. But also, I kind of don't care. I'm just going to punch him. On my way. With many mechs, the ability to uh, take him down without without wrecking the thing would you. matter. With a panther, like, I, I really... I don't even want the panther I have, frankly. Everybody just run over there and punch right. him. Vent your heat. So he's unsteady now. A hit here, even if it doesn't kill him, should push him over. So yeah, side torso destroyed, pilot injured. He's going to go down from that, which is probably going to kill his pilot, is my guess. Because he took that hit to the head. Yep. Pilot incapacitated. Okay. Mission. Well, the good news is there's going to be more salvage here, you know? At the very least, even if it's not salvage that is individually valuable, it's stuff we can sell. And even though we're not getting a lot of monetary value here, uh, extra objective completion increases pay, uh, we're still getting XP for our pilots as well, which is valuable at this point. It's not a lot of XP, but it's, it's something. All right, I definitely want to take the fire starter salvage since that's a thing we don't have yet. We're going to get five more pieces. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of garbage here, unfortunately. We're probably just going to get a bunch of stuff we don't need. Medium laser, small laser, some jump jets, yeah. It's all it's all pretty whatever. That piece of that fire starter though. That's good. It's possible that I should have tried not to core him. So that we could take more, more, or at least have a chance of getting more pieces of his, uh, his mech. But that's probably not the only time we'll see one of those. We will have opportunities. My goal here is to, uh, after we leave this system, my goal is to never again travel to a system that has, uh, that has this little challenge. It makes sense for, for us score-wise to do all the missions here while we're here. But hopefully we'll never see another half skull, because these are a little bit too easy. Uh, but I think that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time when we, uh, we seek our fortunes somewhere else. And we'll see you then.